Welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar uh, where we cover a variety of um, topics of interest to libraries. Um, we, the show is broadcast live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. But if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show every week, as we are right now. And they, we, the recordings are then posted to our website. And I will show you at the end of today's show where those recordings are so you can watch them later. Um, Encompass Live is actually, this is the beginning this month. It's the beginning of the 10th year of Encompass Live. Wow. Yeah, I when I figured that out, I was a little stunned myself. <laughs> um, so we have a lot of archives. Um, let me out there. Um, we do have everything that we've ever posted, that we've ever had on the show, going back to the first show, which was in January 2009. So um, be aware when you are looking at the archives, you will find some old information, some um, historical shows. But you know, we're librarians, we save everything. That's how it works. It's our archives. Um, but you can watch everything we have um, the recordings of the shows, if there are any presentations, handouts, links to websites, those are all included in there as well. Um, both the live show and our archives are free and open to anyone to watch, so please do share with your uh, friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, anybody who you think may be interested in any of the topics that we are having on the show, they can sign up for our upcoming shows on our website or watch the archives. We do a mixture of things here on Encompass Live. Um, our only criteria is it's something to do with libraries. Something libraries are currently doing, some new product or service we think they might offer. Um, from here at the Nebraska Library Commission, any programs or services or things that we offer to libraries, um, we'll have sessions on. We also bring in um, we have Nebraska, we have Nebraska Library Commission staff that do presentations, but we also bring in guest speakers from across the state and across the country to talk about what they're doing in their libraries or ideas they have or things that are going on. Um, and that's what we have this morning. Um, to my left here is Denise Harders, Denise, right? who is the uh, director of the Central Plains Library System, which for those of you watching who are not in Nebraska, um, here in Nebraska we have four regional library systems in the four different areas of the state, and they are um, kind of our person on the ground, local consultant, trainer, mm -hmm. contact um, for the Library Commission now in the state. Okay. And Denise is in charge of the middle, Central Plains, pretty much top to bottom <laughs> all the way through the middle yeah and um, I invited her to come on the show today um, to talk about dazzling displays um, and I know this is a session that you've done in libraries or for libraries sometimes I, it's been mm -hmm. requested a few times mm -hmm. because it's a, a topic of interest people feel like maybe they need to have a great artistic person <laughs> on staff to do this and I yeah. want to assure you that's not the case yeah, yeah. So that's that's why it gets requested is, what am I going to do? What, what can I possibly do? Yeah. So uh, Denise is going to give us some ideas and tips and tricks about how to do that. So I will just hand it over to you to take it away. All right. Should be able to use the mouse or yeah. the okay. keyboard potentially. All righty. So dazzling, you know, I I'm, I'm, might have pumped it up a little bit, but I think <laughs> you'll enjoy the displays we have. First, though, I would like to talk a little bit about why you would spend time on displays. I know that a lot of libraries, the librarian's time is so limited, and so they worry about actually spending that time. But even, even if you have a small collection, it's difficult to browse if the books are all just sitting on the shelf with their spines out. So that's one of the major reasons you wanna do displays is so then you can highlight some of those books that you have. Library collections just have too many books for patrons to browse comfortably. And the stacks contain such a wide variety of topics and the way nonfiction in particular is arranged, patrons don't always understand how that works. Oh, yeah. And um, not everybody's going to ask for help. They might wander through and be gone before you know it, before you even have a chance to offer to help. So displays are a great way of doing reader's advisory without saying a word. You can uh, feature books in displays in those smaller groups. That helps patrons select what they might want to take home. Uh, 
And actually, something as simple as if you have a whole cart full of books and you don't have time to shelve them, roll those out towards the circulation desk. People will pick off the cart that serves two purposes. It's a display mm -hmm. and you don't have to shelve it. <laughs> so it's you a bit of sign at like, you know, recent popular titles. Right. Somebody just recently put it. So returned it. So and I, and I have the sign further in that, <laughs> that is like that. So displaying your collection is, is really essential because then you get the maximum use out of your materials. People don't know what you're buying. They don't anticipate that you're only going to buy the best sellers, and you, and you don't. So sometimes older items need an opportunity to shine, and this displays are a great way to do it. So what should be displayed? Okay, that's always a question that comes up. Remember the three cues. First, you have quality. Patrons, especially children, will take whatever's on display. School librarians know that. If you <laughs> line books up on the top of the shelves mm -hmm. and a class comes in to check out, it's gone. The first thing they see, they, they grab. Clear those shelves off. So you want to make sure that you're offering material and that is good quality. Spend time to find well-reviewed or award-winning titles. But you don't want to select only new books because there actually should be a new books display someplace in your library mm -hmm. so people can see what's coming in. Covers matter. Select books with a jacket or a color printed cover because classics, let's say Treasure Island, the newer copy with a color printed cover mm -hmm. will circulate time after time after time when the old blue, plain blue cover yeah, just will sit that. on the shelf forever. So, patrons trust us to steer them towards engaging materials. So remember that, that you need, you not, not just anything will do. All right, the second cue is quick. Quick means quick for staff to prepare and restock. If you have time and are really creative and artistic, Make it as elaborate as you want it to be. But if your time's limited, use that limited time to select your material because that's what is important about a display. Quick also means quick for patrons. If we prepare carefully considered displays, patrons become used to it. Your regulars will come in and they'll walk to the displays every time they're in the library. And think about how your patrons will interact with your display. If you have a locked case and you have books inside the locked case, then they're not going to ask to borrow them because they're going to think, oh, it's just for looks. For sure. I'm not allowed to touch those. Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't take those out of there. So it's important if you have a locked case, that's a great opportunity to offer your patrons a place to put out their display their collections that they have at home. Like if somebody has a fantastic salt and pepper shaker collection or a, yeah. or a model airplane collection or whatever your patrons enjoy, be sure and give them the opportunity and use the lock case that way. Now you'll want to keep your displays visible. Don't always hide them clear in the back corner of the room. It's okay to put a display back there, but that shouldn't be your only display. It's, a, it's not like the grocery store where they put the milk in the back so you have to walk <laughs> all the way through the store and to pick get, things yeah. up. It doesn't work the same with library displays. And so you can have more than one display. In the oh, library, certainly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Different topics for different genres, whatever. And in different lengths of time, you can have a quick one on a certain day and then a month long one somewhere else. All right, the third cue is quantity. You have to decide how many titles to display, and that is totally based on the space that you have. Mm -hmm. Don't try and jam too many on, on a little table. You think, oh, I found all these great books on this theme. Don't jam them together because then it, it gets overwhelming again. Just put a few out, restock it regularly. 
That's what's important. Make sure that you don't let it get picked over so there's only one or two things there because then they won't even stop. You need to have back backups to fill in when people do grab these and check them out. Right. Yeah. That's, that's why you need a little bit of lead time when you're planning your displays because you do want to gather up the material so you can just and you'll have them in the back or under the desk with a note on them so you know which display they go to. Be quick and easy. And it's a good idea it, to tabulate circulation statistics for the displays. Statistics really validate the time that you spend doing this activity. And it's, it's not that complicated. You start out with the number of books that are on the display. And you know how many you have in your stack under the desk. So with, if you get there and those are all gone, you know, to add that number. And then when you're ready to take the display down, if there's any books left on it, you just subtract it. And then you know how many books have gone out. Easy way to see how effective your display was for that particular topic. Right. And this is the one we were just talking about. It's a simple printed sign that says someone else just read this book. <laughs> it's a small table. Cool. It's close to the CERC desk. Check items in. Of course, select the ones that are interesting covers, maybe a different topic. Make sure and put your new books back on your new book shelf. And then um, other books can go here. At the end of the day, clear it off, put them on the shelving cart. On the next day, you have a whole bunch more to check in because you cleared, cleaned out your book drop mm -hmm. and you'll be ready to go with this display again. It's, it's one of the easiest ones yeah. and it saves work all the way around. Mm -hmm. So that's one place for a display is right near the CERC desk. Also, a lot of um, the library stacks have slat walls you can put displays on those. You don't have to just only put a book or two up there. You can put signs and slogans. The book truck is a great idea. Once again, you can wheel it any place. Um, all of these locations that are listed here are a terrific place to put in a display. How do you do hanging from the ceiling? Well, as that one. <laughs> the, oh, maybe I'm too old. I remember the old macrame tables, you know, the oh, glass yeah. table that uh -huh. comes down from the ceiling. Mm -hmm. It'd be a great, if, if it was a macrame table, you could put craft books yeah. on it. It'd be terrific. All righty. So you do all this work and you get a bunch of props and you put out your books and they clear it the first day. Now what? <laughs> now what do I do? So it's important to design displays that last. It's a good idea to use books that do not already have holds, of course, because if they have holds, they need to be on the hold shelf, but to not allow holds on things that are listed as being on the display in your circulation system. You could set up a, a temporary shorter lending period simply because then when it comes back, it can go back onto the display for someone else to look at. Um, if you have a display plan, a good display plan will have stuff all over the library. If you have a plan where, where different displays can go, but make sure you put, put them up front so you can see them. Um, Big display furniture is expensive and, it, and it's really not necessary. You know, those special tables and, yeah. and um, the ones that stack and you don't need all of that. It's easy if you have a small item like those cubes that you can buy in the, oh, in the, like Lowe's or Menards, those little cubes that can sit on a regular table sign holders for an eight and a half by 11 sheet that you can print out of your computer. Mm -hmm. um, fabric is so easy. Tablecloths, plastic ones even, mm -hmm. or sheets. Those are, that's a big piece of fabric for not a lot of money. So you just need a small investment. Yeah. Yeah. And 
anything to make it interesting. Have you ever walked through the Dollar General? Oh my gosh, they have tons of display things oh, in yeah. there. And it's all a dollar. It's my favorite <laughs> thing. So just be aware, it's a, it's a mindset. You think about it as you go along. And remember to focus on, just focus your displays on ensuring that patrons who have come in for any reason, maybe they didn't come in to check out a book for themselves. They brought a child to story time, or they needed to make a quick photocopy, or they wanted to jump on their computer and check their email real fast for an answer they're waiting for. Make sure you focus your displays so that they get caught. <laughs> that way they can, they'll say, oh gosh, this is clever. And they'll stop and look. So it's, those are ways that displays can really help you. And that the one thing yet yeah, do you have to do is have that stash of books in the back. That's, that's highly important to make sure. Now there's bulletin boards that you can keep up all year long. You can, if you have a big empty wall, like a lot of schools do, this, I've seen this one in schools more than anywhere else, but you, you pretend like your wall is a window. Yeah, okay. You put up some window valances on a curtain rod. Then you use sheet protectors for each of the window panes and that you can change out what's in them. And then student it. work or covers of book jacket, uh, copies of book jackets. And um, that's, it looks like a window pane, but it's ever changing. And, or another big wall thing is if you can find a giant map mm -hmm. or if you have a big bulletin board and you can, now I know that you can get a really big map at, on Amazon. It ranges from 10 to $25 on how big it is. Mm -hmm. But if you put that on a board that's just inside the library, students can have a little pin to mark the setting of the books where the books that they're reading. Cool. And that way it's a little interactive and yeah. Yeah, they get to they feel like, oh yeah, I'm putting this book in the book drop, but I want to put my pin in the map. I, you can post a random question each week. Um, another interactive thing, students like to put their answers on sticky notes. You buy sticky notes, you get the little ones, the big ones, the in-between ones, all different colors. And you let the students answer their question and they, they enjoy looking at those. And of course you'll have some, some people who'll put something funny, yeah. somebody will put something serious, but they just enjoy looking at all the answers. It needs to be, of course, all age appropriate. And, um, but it's colorful. And then at the end of the week, you just clear all the stickies off, throw them in a dumpster and, and pull out another question. I see in some places um, do this, a lot of universities for whatever reason, um, whiteboards. Oh, oh and, and then they write. write a whiteboard that they have on an easel or something with a question and then put markers out there. And then they just erase it for the next question. Yeah, no money spent. Yeah. It's easy. And it, it can be up any time. Mm -hmm. You can start with a large tree. I like that tree idea, yeah. And then you have leaves mm -hmm. cut out of all different, of course, all different varieties of leaves, the maple leaves, the elm leaves, all of them are and fun to shapes and colors. Let them write a name for the, of the book they read and stick the leaf on the tree or in the basket that's under the tree or wherever the blowing in the wind close to the tree. <laughs> so it, it gets decorative and the kids, once again, it's interactive. It displays for any time of the year. You don't have to relate it to a holiday or a season. You can put up a big sign that says people you ought to know. You can know stock it with biographies. Mm -hmm. Biographies, I remember shelving biographies, but there were never very many to shelve. <laughs> Not enough of them get read, yeah. Yeah, the newest, the most, the people in the news that are in the news this week, mm -hmm. their biographies get read, Yeah, but there are so many great biographies in both children and adult areas. You wouldn't have to restrict it to one or the other. Mm -hmm. Another, 
idea that's kind of fun is novels that have a person's name in the title of the book. Yeah, so twists it mixed up. So little, yeah, people that you know, they're not real people, but you know, mm -hmm. it would be a fun book to read. Another, uh, once again, put up, use your die cuts and cut out the letters. Have I got a story for you? Then you can pair fiction and nonfiction books that are about oh. the same event, you know, like the Titanic. Mm -hmm. There's realistic books about the Titanic, but there's mm -hmm. fiction books about that event as well. Mm -hmm. And of course, there's even a DVD of the movie. So right. then you can, you just decide which event you're going to go for. Or and then like, did you, did you like the movie, read the book or read the book before you see the movie? Right. Where you want to do it. <laughs> That's a good one too. Yeah. Um, staff favorites. It, yeah. it never ceases to amaze me because I always wonder who cares what I read. But staff yeah. favorites, pe some like people, some people yeah. stop there first. Mm -hmm. And it is, it needs to be personal. Mm -hmm. If you can, I mean, with the digital cameras and the photocopy machines we have now, you could take everybody's picture and have them hand write a little note about why this book, yeah. why they really like this book so well, and use it as a bookmark in that book. But staff favorites is one that, that could be up all the time. And this one I just saw, recently saw, back to the book, and you include pictures <laughs> I mean, this is one where you'd have to think about it ahead of time. Books that have pictures of a person's back on the cover. Huh. It's so funny. You know, people are facing away. They're looking into the distance. They're, there's all kinds of books. There's the back of the dress. But it's, it's really, it would be a funny one to, to put it's, out. It's kind of thinking, if somebody obviously realized there's a lot of the same kind of picture people are using on book covers. It keeps coming up as a theme. It does. <laughs> so that's something else you do. What other kind of themes that you could that you could find? You wouldn't even think that are related, but it's just this is what the picture is on the front. So almost every, every time. Yeah, anything you can find a whole bunch of books on something like pictures, books with flowers on them. The book right. might not have the, all the different books are going to have totally different topics potentially, right. but they all have flowers. You know? Right, or the you titles know. maybe the same word. Right, because yeah. the. I can't tell you how many books have come out that it's the girl, oh, the yes, girl on the, the train, yes, the girl, the dude, train. whatever. <laughs> so there will be other trends like that. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of fun to watch them and to put them up and think of a cute slogan to yeah. put with them. People enjoy clever. They like mm -hmm. to, to see it and, and humor. They yeah. don't always... Um, think that humor is something that their librarian is going to display but i think we need to let them know that yes indeed we We're do fun. we are fun people um books to read before you die there are tons of best books oh, yeah. list my pinterest page has a bunch of them i have it, it says best book lists mm -hmm. and it's full of them and there's always new ones that they, they every year so comes out with it says oh you have to read this book before yeah. you die yeah so you know that that's a, a one that can be used all year long and long-term book displays do save staff time now I wouldn't suggest this be your only book display those long-term ones because you want to make sure things are changing it's just like your website mm -hmm. or yeah. your um, Facebook page you don't want it to be the same all the time so it's that's true in your library as well if people walk in your library and nothing looks like it has ever moved that's not a good no. thing you don't want it to be static so then of course there's tons of displays related to the month and i don't need to tell you january you know there's slogans there's um about self-improvement and healthy cookbooks and money makeovers and it's the month that you organize everything starting new yes. you know get, do your closets you know everything so just grab a slogan off this list and of course this powerpoint will be yes with It'll the included with display the yep. mm -hmm. so then you can just pull a pull off a slogan and grab your books and you're ready to go February pink everything's <laughs> gonna be pink or red um, people like craft things so if you can throw those in of I course like the books from the bottom shelf because 
nobody looks down there because it's it's Not really inconvenient. Yeah. And before I wore, you know, I wore contacts for so many years that it didn't bother me. Mm -hmm. But then it got to the point where I needed trifocals. Oh, yeah. So then I had to go to glasses. And I'm telling you, unless I'm standing on my head, I can't, I can't see, see the down. titles. Yeah. So, yes, the books from the bottom shelf, that's one that you can do just before you consider weeding because that way things that, people are interested in or that catch their attention, mm -hmm. they'll check it out and then it won't be in, in the weeding pile. Right. So <laughs> young adult books, they have such funny topics mm -hmm. sometimes. Anti-romance. <laughs> but yeah, they, you can uh, put up a display, not your mama's romance and, and cut the hearts up or make them out of black paper or, so there's lots of, of things you can do. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't really have to be all pink, but. And then, you know, I mean, it's in Black History Month, obviously. Of you course. You probably wouldn't have to do that display in pink. <laughs> no, no, probably not. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's, that it's important to look at the national things that are going on. Yeah, and there's actually websites, uh, there's one, um, I, I should probably find it uh, that posted on Facebook that the day, whatever this did, the day or month of things. Oh, like I have track that. all of these things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can look up what is the, you know, the, what happened the, on this Yeah. Day. Like, you know, Black History Month or Women's History Month or whatever. And what happened on this day. So you can focus on some of those things in your displays. Yes. Yeah, so you can look up ahead of time and see, well, what do I need to look on for June? <laughs> right. Yeah. Yep. That's, that's a good way to do. Now I was going to show you a couple. This one I thought <laughs> was, <laughs> was humorous, and that, that was one of those that I liked. And they, they just picked books that had winter scenes. Mm -hmm. And and I just think it's important to let them know that we're, we're real people, too. And when you look at that, it really would not be a hard display to put together. You have a mm -hmm. couple of round circles. Mm -hmm. Of course, the black spots for the mouth, the triangle for the nose. Mm -hmm. There's nothing there. Cut out those uh, snowflakes. Right, and you can buy the snowflakes if you have to. Sure. But there's nothing there. You do not have to be an artist to do that display. March, of course, you've got Women's History Month. Mm -hmm. That's another one where the biographies fill in. Uh, um, Irish fiction, sure. Right, in March. And, you know, everybody's got a shelf of those chicken soup for the soul <laughs> things. Yes, there's so many. And so that those are great to display on quick reads. Um, it's National Quilting Month, so you can uh -huh. get little pieces of fabric, little squares. It, of course, our, most of us have some fabric at home that we could cut up and uh, put up a display piece by piece and then get out your um, quilting books mm -hmm. and put them put them out for people to see um, another one that could go all year long is an author of the week mm. now and yeah you could pick patterson or the popular. nicholas sparks you could do that but it might be interesting to pick somebody else make sure they have a few books under their belt because otherwise you're out of display material in a hurry kind of like the the books in the lower shelf authors that you maybe never have heard of that you missed yeah yeah mm -hmm. so those are um that's one that you could run all year if you need a long-term one and other, none of the others interested you that's a great one to try april would be a good one for like humor because it's april fool's day april fool's day yeah so do us as uh, some sort of display related to that well, if anybody I, out there, too, I just want to say something about halfway through here. If anybody out there has any ideas of displays you've done, too, for mm -hmm. these, go ahead and type them into the question section. We can share your ideas of anything you've done, too. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, May is, is easy. It's all about mothers and motherhood mm -hmm. and flowers. And like you said spring. before, you could pick any number of books that have flowers on the cover. Mm -hmm. um, and then National Home Improvement Month. Yeah. All those home repair books come out. Because it's getting warm enough and nice enough to do that. To do a few yeah. things. So this is one that I that I like. It's a slogan that yeah. I saw on a brochure one time. Mm -hmm. And then it starts showing up as um, displays. You know, well-behaved women seldom make history. Yes, that is true. 
something else going on in March is March Madness. Oh, yes, basketball. And yes. this is so easy. Get in the game, read. There's nothing. There's a basketball net. There's um, mm. printouts of basketballs that have been cut out and laid on this tablecloth. And then you yeah, get out the, the team books, the players' biographies, mm -hmm. the how-to-play-basketball type books. All of those can go sure. on for March Madness. June, you know, there are lots of things happening in June. Of course, Father's Day is there. Mm -hmm. It is audiobook month. If you have any audiobooks, that's a great display to throw out there because so people know that you have them. Mm -hmm. Um, flag day is in June, so the red, white, and blue. You can, and that can continue into July. Into July, so you don't have to change it out then. Um, and speaking of July, then, of course, everybody thinks about paperbacks. And you can even display the paperbacks that are on your friend's book sales mm -hmm. and not be ones that you check out. Because oh, we yeah. really don't want them to take the library books to the beach. No, it's not really. A they come back with sand in them. It's <laughs> not good. But it, you can say, drop 50 cents in, take, mm -hmm. take two books, away you go. Um, by July, kids are getting bored. Yeah. So anything you can do that would interest the old children from third through eighth grade would be good and give parents a break, let them know what they might find interesting. Mm -hmm. um, you never think about snow in August, but it, you could put up a display. It's, it's You're getting cool hot reading. You to, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, and this is one I saw just the other day, the potty training books. Now they go out pretty regularly on their own, mm -hmm. but children have to be potty trained before they can start preschool, mm -hmm. in, in most preschools. Yeah. So come August, it's crunch time. Mm -hmm. So you can <laughs> you can come up with a low potty chair and do a, a tasteful display <laughs> of, yes. of those um, potty training books. So that's an interesting thing that some of these displays could be not just fun things but educational. There may be some people who don't realize that that's something that they need to do mm -hmm. or something that's coming up that they need to be paying attention to. Um, that could be a display that this is happening next month. And I assuming uh, well, okay, earlier it could have been like tax preparation. Right. Too, for yeah. April. You could do that in, in so, March. Right. Even. You do it. And that's the thing to think ahead so that goes they can, into April. Right. So that's cooks good. and oh, crooks. Yeah. Any of those mysteries? There's several authors that do they mysteries do, yeah. with recipes. Mm -hmm. So I thought Cooks and Crooks was a, an interesting um, title. And so easy. You go to the dollar store and you get some recipe boxes and some mm -hmm. three by five oh, yeah. cards that are decorated. The recipe cards up there. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's fun to just put a few things in with your display, but it doesn't have to have to cost a fortune. You know, school, September, we all think of school and oh, autumn. Talk like a pirate day. Yep. Yeah, talk <laughs> like a pirate day is gaining in popularity. Oh, More yeah. people know about it. Um, it's September 19th. Every year. Every year. And there are so many books now in the children's area that feature pirates. Oh, yeah. And you could even dig out the And even adult. Because adult, they're, you know, you're talking about biographies, stories of real pirates. Real pirates. Male and female. I mean, there's mm -hmm. more stories coming out. All the time. About them, yeah. And it's a, a topic that a lot of people find interesting. Mm -hmm. So um, that's a fun one, just another one. Of course, October, everybody thinks about Halloween. Mm -hmm. So you, but. I didn't know it was National Pizza Month. That's interesting. It yeah. is. <laughs> and so you could look for books with pizza in the title. Sometimes I recommend, like January is National Soup Month. Mm -hmm. I recommend that if you wanted to, you could have a soup, a, a chili competition, oh, or sure. a, just a soup competition, and where pa library mm -hmm. patrons could come in and taste the soups and choose their favorite. Mm -hmm. You could do that with pizza. You know, order a few pizzas in, call all your team advisory board members have them come in and serve pizza to anybody who comes in the library on a particular day advertise it mm -hmm. who knows what your circulation will be 
There's a pirate one. To treasure, books yeah. to treasure. So you could put uh, put your pirate books out with that too, if you like. Now this is one I I've kind of liked over time. I've been I've seen it where your the pants. It says these we'll books will scare your pants, pants off. <laughs> And they're okay. they're blue jeans, and there's uh -huh. enough um, paper stuffed in them uh -huh. that they'll stand yes. up. And the other one that is really funny, and I don't have a picture of it, but your table, if it has legs, you can um, put striped socks on them, uh -huh. and then witch-looking shoes. Oh, like and then like from Wizard of Oz. Yeah, witch so it's legs, the witch yeah. legs. Yeah. So I think those are fun. Lots of lots of fun to be had at Halloween time. We're finishing up the months, you know. Of course, Thanksgiving gets lost in the chaos of Christmas, but you there are some really nice Thanksgiving stories. You can um, genealogy kind of links to that because you're that's a family, your family, family, right? And so you can really feature that section of your library. Of course, you have your regulars that use the genealogy department, but there's probably a lot of people out there that don't know what you have there. Mm -hmm. So then in December, uh, holiday stories, homemade Christmas, all about Santa. Of course, Pearl Harbor kind of gets lost in there, but mm -hmm. um, you have tons of people. I know my dad reads so many books about the Second World War. Yeah. And so if you get those out, they will circulate. Mm -hmm. I like the holiday stories for all different, because there's all there's so many different holidays right. in December. That's just a few, Christmas and Hanukkah and Kwanzaa. And it's, yeah. Right. And you want to make sure that it's an inclusive type Absolutely. display. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's a good way to make sure that you have books on all different topics too. Now this is one that I really kind of like. It's called, oh. you get you gather up all your tear jerkers, you know, uh, stories that are gonna make people cry. Yeah. Whether it's a book or a DVD, and then you get out your Kleenex box, put a sign on that says "Read it and weep," <laughs> and make it a big display, you know, of all the tear jerkers. I I love that one. So now, and here's the uh, fact okay. that you don't have to be super artistic. If I said to you, you need to make a penguin and stick it in the snow and bury your head in a good book, well, you might not think about this. Look at it. It's just like a big circle it's just almost. A circle. Cut out some feet. Some little feet, yeah. the poles. It's and it's very, um, quilt batting on the bottom of it that you buy oh, at the craft store snow. to mm -hmm. make snow. Stick your head down in there. Then get out all the penguin books. Think of all the books that are in most libraries that are both fiction and nonfiction, but in the kids' department, there's tons of stories that have penguins in them. Mm -hmm. It's a great display, easy to do, and can last more than one month because you can start it in December oh, like and leave it through February. Oh, there's your Valentine's cool. display. Just gather up those red Book cover covers. books and a lot of those will be your older titles because they don't have jackets on them, a lot of them. Mm -hmm. But um, if you have some empty shelves, them. it's a great way to do a display. I've seen people do similar displays with um, flag colors. Oh, to make it look like a flag. To make yeah. it look like a flag on a, dis on a mm -hmm. shelving unit that's empty. I've seen some people do um, build like for wintertime, uh, white co white um, covers to build a snowman. So you make it look like the two circles oh, yeah. of the snowman. Yep. And then black ones on top of that for the top for of the hats. hats. Um, just can get creative with just the colors. And I don't know if you have anything here about the, I don't remember the title, but it was, the cover was blue. I think I might have okay, that yeah, one in there. That's, a, <laughs> I, that's, a, that's if, a, a funny one that, well, it's an ongoing joke, if, as you know. If you've library, ever worked in a library. They say, I'm looking for this book. I don't remember the title or author or anything but i know the cover was blue or green and, and you just, had it over there yeah <laughs> so you just put up a display of all your blue covered books and put that sign i don't remember it you make a sign that says it i don't remember the title but the cover was blue and that's right. the theme of your display is just 
books. We'll all do books that are blue. <laughs> They'll be in all different topics. It doesn't matter. And it doesn't matter. It's a great one. Color, it's funny. Color displays are fun. Yeah. They really are. And this is one you talked about oh, earlier. Yeah. Have movie. you read a good movie lately? Mm -hmm. Oh, I like that. You know, books to movies. This could even be the start of a book club. Mm, so that is on there? people yeah. can read the book and then watch you can start out with things that are already on dvd mm -hmm. so that you have something to watch right away but so you read the book and then you watch the movie it's a great it's a great book club idea and it's just a great display too to remind people i just put up on my pinterest board and i believe on the website from cpls uh, books that will be movies in this coming year, right? Upcoming ones. Mm -hmm. So that way you can get busy and read. We get ahead of it. Yeah. April uh, is Poetry Month, and once again, a play on words. <laughs> poetry, not a hard one to do. You, those leaves are not difficult. You just grab all your poetry books, and that I think is even actually on a a rolling blackboard like what you is see in the school yeah oh yeah you can and then there's a better. there's a table underneath of it or a little it. book display and it's good um this is uh, the one book for one nebraska book this year is a poetry book it is uh, so i saw nebraska that poets so that is totally something you could link into the one book one nebraska and exactly what you're doing oh and remember that's in april so be sure mm -hmm. and reserve your book club set yes yes for do. april do that right away Okay, famous series oh, yeah. are are something. Girls, it's generally little girls. I know little boys read Little House on the Prairie too, but if you put up a display like this, and even the bottom of the shelf looks like the back of the wagon. I mean, now that one, oh, yeah. I gotta say, takes some creativity to make the to make the prairie schooner yeah. there. That's that does take intricate, intricate, intricate in some, yeah. Right. So that's going to take some time. That one I would want to leave up for quite a while, simply because it it's going to take you some time to put it together. Not to find the books, but to actually do that type of display. But it's still fun to do once in a while. This is a great one. Go to Goodwill. Get an old suitcase without wheels. Find a map and put inside the the cover you know just inside the suitcase it, you could put in there books about time travelers oh yeah. you could put not just traditional travel books yeah you could put actual travel books in there like full doors and and all of those travel books mm -hmm. or you could put books in there where traveling is part of the plot so the, there's all different kinds of things that you could do with that, but I love the old suitcase. Yeah. I think everybody needs to have one of those in their back room. Right? <laughs> so just looking up, I want to make sure I got the title right for anyone. We're talking about the One Book, One Nebraska Choice for 2018. Right. The title is Nebraska Presence, an Anthology of Poetry. Um, and it is edited by Greg Kuzmiski and Mary Stilwell. So, yeah. And we are going to have book club kids just kind of an aside here. Yeah. Book Club Kids are going to be available to the Library Commission and through all the systems That's for just anyone say. who wants to borrow them. The books are on their way. Going to be, she's picking hers up today. Actually. Yeah. And so um, if you want so if you yeah. have that book club set mm -hmm. for April, be sure and let us know so we can get you down on our list. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, see, this is another one of those. Eh, it's sitting like, on a little stool right out in front of the CERP desk, and it says, Bet you can't read just one. Okay. Now you see those books stacked back there? Uh -huh. Those are books in a series. Oh, okay. So you have the whole series there, and you so you, you bet you the can. first one, you're gonna want to read the second and third and fourth. Yeah, can't read just one. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought that one was really fun. I'm not sure. I don't know where you'd find a yellow trash bag, but that's what you really need, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So but I just thought that idea was fun. You could just do that on a on a bulletin board could, too. Yeah. This is one for schools um, with, to display material that has come in over the summer. Oh, you know, since you've been school. yeah, since you've been gone, or 
the books missed you or mm -hmm. something like that. But you can display those for the first two or three weeks of school. And the kids will know that if you have readers that go through a lot of books, they'll really appreciate knowing what's new, what they missed. Here's one of those that comes, <laughs> is on a book truck. And it happens in September. The last week of September week. is Banned Books Week. Um, there's generally a little bit of a theme, but it essentially is books that have been challenged. So those, and Captain Underpants books are challenged all the time. So that's an easy one that everybody has a few of anyway. But there's, there's a whole list of banned books that you could put on that cart. And the, the chain link is plastic. Um, probably came from maybe Halloween display stuff. Maybe, uh, but once again, I've checked the dollar store. You know, leaf wow. through a good book. That's a great one for fall. You could put it up in September. Mm -hmm. Leave it up through for a couple months. That could be, yeah, yeah, through almost um, September, October, yeah, and part of November even before you put up your holiday books. Um, those leaves, you don't have to go ahead and cut all those out. If you go to like. Um, a craft store like you Hobby Lobby bags of those fake artificial leaves yeah right that are really them. great colors mm -hmm. and you just snip each one off and put it up on their your display a couple of dollars you're gonna have plenty of leaves <laughs> and it'll save you a ton of time if you want to feature mm -hmm. nonfiction this is so simple it's it's just a very simple display that that way whoever is reading it knows that those are all nonfiction books. Mm -hmm. And that's something that children don't always understand. Yeah. So if you were in a children's um, area or a school, it might be such a thing as you'd want to feature books that kind of read like a story, but they're actually true. This is one of my favorites because this is, again, one of those interactive ones. If you, for the whole month ahead of when you want to do this display, everybody that checks out a book, you have them uh, trace their hand. Yeah. And you can either cut them out or have one of your volunteers do it, or the person who draws around their own hand could do it. But then the next month, then you could put all their hands up. And, and, and they know that I contributed to that display. They were part of it. <laughs> yep. Something that's important that we don't always think of. Take pictures of, well, I put really good displays, but take pictures of any of your displays. And then you file them according to the holiday or the month or the theme, whatever works best for you. And then the old displays can either spark new ideas mm -hmm. and sometimes this has happened it's like the whole blue book thing <laughs> they'll remember that they saw a book on one of your displays mm -hmm. and they'll say well I, I don't remember who wrote it it, it was about winter <laughs> <laughs> you know so then you can go back and pull out those pictures mm -hmm. and see if if you actually you maybe see caught what you it put on there yeah and also is a good, I think, too, a good reminder of what you did in a previous year, in right. a previous month, that you either, and it can go both ways. It's, I want to remember that this is going to be an annual thing we do, right? or I want to remember what we did so I do something different, and then maybe like three years from now, go back to that one that we did before that month, so you have kind of like a, a, a stash of ideas right what you've already created yeah ideas and the letters because so many right. times you have to cut out letters that go with it or use the die cut machine to do that mm -hmm. you can gather up those letters and put them in a sandwich bag and file to save and yeah. file them with the pictures mm -hmm. then at least you know you have the you do have that slogan if you want to use it again but like I say I I use things like that to make sure I don't repeat yeah because I forget what I've done. Exactly. Yep. So if you're looking for sources for display ideas, there's lots of different ways that you can 
can gather those. We've talked about some here. Um, I do send out a monthly email from the system. There's a minimum of 10 display ideas or activity ideas that I email out to our system. If you're not in Central Plains Library System, it also gets posted to our website every month. Mm -hmm. And what happens is in at the end of January, I am posting March ideas. So you have time to prepare. So you can okay. gather up those books and have a stash wherever you need them to be. So um, another thing that you can do is I do have a Pinterest board, Displays mm -hmm. for Libraries, and I add to it all the time. Um, if you go to our website, which is the, we have a commission website, so it's libraries.ne.gov and um, slash CPLS, you can go to our website. There's a link, uh, follow me on Pinterest on the right-hand side of the page. And if you, if you do Pinterest, then you just click follow when you get there. And that way you can see all of the ideas that I'm, I'm drawing from. There it is. Yeah, there it is. that's it. There it is. <laughs> yeah, that was library thing, the one below it is. Yeah. Is Pinterest. Yeah, there it is. So um, there's, uh, I know that a lot of people hesitate to get involved in Pinterest or to even start looking at it because you can lose yourself and spend <laughs> hours and hours yeah. looking at it. But if you have a specific thing that you want mm -hmm. and you say that you're going to follow the displays for libraries, when I post something on my page, it will come up in your feed because you've followed me. And then you can see if you want to put it in your display list, your, well, then you can do that. Mm -hmm. And this is the website that you were talking about. I think so, yeah. Today, Today in History. In history. Mm -hmm. And there's the website. And like I say, the, the PowerPoint will be up on the website with the, with the video, but so that's the thing to look at to see what's coming up to do display on. They do post, I, I believe, I felt, like I said, I follow their Facebook page. And so each day they'll say, today is so-and-so day. Right. Like, this happened today. So that's but not you really can useful. Look ahead. For, right. That's yeah. not useful for what we're talking about here today. Um, but, yeah, looking at it and saying, well, what's happening next month? Yeah. Right. And they break it down by category, like military things that happened on a particular day or political things. So they they have it all divided up so you can see what might be interesting to your patrons. So another way to get extra mileage out of your displays is take that picture for your file, but also post that picture on your web page. Sure. Because it then, doesn't have to just be an in-person attraction to, to your users. Right. You, they don't yeah. have to come in the library to see it. They can see it on your Facebook page or your web page. So, and another type of book that a lot of times gets ignored because it checks out so much anyway. Any like, of you that have graphic any help? Yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah. Any of you that have graphic novels and yeah. kids that are reading them. And adults. Oh, there's lots of adults. Lots of adults now. Yeah. yeah. So um, they are incredibly popular. So of course you're gonna. It's gonna take a lot to keep that display full. But it is something that if your graphic novels are kind of in the back of a corner shelf, mm -hmm. it might be a good idea to bring it forward. And we talked about this. Color themes are so much fun. Um, if you look for something. You can look for any kind of book that has a bright green cover. And then it's all topics, but the sign says it's not easy being green. And if you'd happen to have a little stuffed animal of Kermit the Frog, oh, sure. you set him up there with the sign and all these green books. It's really fun. Or you can do the reading of the green if it was happened to be March. Or you could do red books, red hot reads, or blue books, books with the blues. Or like Krista said, I don't remember the title, <laughs> but the cover. But was. I know it was blue. Um, major news events. Of course, we have the Olympics coming up, mm -hmm. and that is in my list of displays for February that I sent out at the end of December. Mm -hmm. um, people watch sports that 
they never have seen before. Oh yeah. I do. So I do too. <laughs> I, I, for the Olympics. Yeah. yeah. You watch the Olympics. So get out the, and I have no idea how many of them are played until I watch the, watch the show. Until so you see what are they doing? Yeah, I, curling. Now that's got to be <laughs> one of those that none of us knew anything about, mm -hmm. but the Olympics brought it to. And now everybody knows. Yeah, we all know what it is. I say curling. But the other thing, you know, we've had horrible hurricanes. Mm -hmm. um, if there's been an earthquake somewhere in the world um, or good things like the release of a film or a celebrity in the news, mm -hmm. take advantage of those things. If you have books about them, you, this is a case where you don't actually have to have a whole stash of books. Mm -hmm. If you put a little sign on the circulation desk off to the side so people can step up and hand you their material, you can just put a little sign there and say and, and feature that book. Mm -hmm. Whatever you yeah. have to say to feature mm -hmm. that book. And then if it gets checked out and take the sign down, yeah. and it's over. But what that means is somebody that came in for three books left with four. Mm -hmm. So that's a that's a good thing. And that celebrity that makes me think local celebrities too. If there's local books about something local, right? Um, and a lot of the libraries do carry local authors. Mm -hmm. That's a great one. And I didn't even say anything about authors' birthdays. Oh yeah. There's nothing you focus on yet. And that's something else that's easy to look for. If you have a ton of books by a particular author, put them into Google. You'll find their birthday. Mm -hmm. When it comes time for their birthday, you don't even have to pull the books off the shelf. Just move them apart a little bit and put that eight and a half by 11 shelf um, saying, so -and -so, this is so-and-so's birthday. So-and-so's birthday. Mm -hmm. It will bring, if it looks different, people will walk towards it. Catch their eye, yeah. So, and if you see a catchy slogan, like the one about well-behaved women seldom make history, write it down. Put it somewhere where you think it makes sense in your files to use for a future display. Mm -hmm. Like say, reader's advisory is so important, but a lot of people don't feel comfortable with that. And this is what we were talking, we had talked about before, last week we were talking about this, is this is, and I think it's in the description, this is what we're talking about with passive programming. Mm -hmm. This is one of those things where you're not actually interacting with people who might be shyer or just don't know that they want to talk to you, but right, they don't realize they're being programmed to <laughs> or right. they don't the right word. they don't know that by looking at that display they have just participated in a program mm -hmm. so that is one great way to make sure that people are finding what they're interested in and it really is the easiest way to promote your collection and it's mm -hmm. going to increase your circulation absolutely yes if you if you go from zero displays to one or two, that's the huge thing about this is not just putting together some fun thing that makes it look interesting in the library, but things will check out, whether it's the books, the DVDs, whatever you have, the audiobooks, they're gonna you're gonna see an increase in them. Yeah. And and when you are, we talked about the one the books from the bottom shelf. Mm -hmm. It's important to give the books that have been purchased every opportunity. I mean, something has to be on the bottom shelf. <laughs> it might be really great stuff. Just so, happens to be where it ended up. <laughs> so make sure that it gets plenty of opportunity to be checked out. That's why we buy material is so that the public can use it. Mm -hmm. So now I have um, listed the references that I used so that you have the opportunity to look at those if you'd like. And so you'll be able to see those on the Yeah, don't worry about trying to write all this down. You'll have access to yeah. this presentation with the recording afterwards. So right. So, and that's where you find me. Cool. Most days. <laughs> Awesome. All right. Thank you, Dees. Um, does anybody have any? Nobody said anything during the show. They're all sticking around watching intently after taking notes. <laughs> um, anybody have any comments or questions before we wrap up for today? We're a little after 11, but that's fine. We started a little after 10. 
Um, this is really great. I wish I had some, it makes me wish I worked in a library again because we did displays where I worked at the university years ago. Mm -hmm. And it was always fun every year, every, every month or whenever to figure out what was coming up new that we needed to focus on. And that's the thing, this isn't just, I mean, we talked a lot about public libraries and schools, but um, universities um, do this as well. Oh, uh, yes. yeah. They have their books they need to focus on and um, their own displays. Um, all types of libraries need to make sure people know what you have. And and we spend a lot of time library. selecting them. Mm -hmm. You know, we do. Yeah. We, we look at reviews. We watch for put a lot um, of work into it. Yeah, things that sell well at a bookstore. We spend a lot of time, so mm -hmm. you want to make sure they get used. Yep. All right. Just some thanks for all the great ideas, comments coming in. So that's great. Um. um Oh, here's a good question. Is there a way we can share our display ideas, i.e. pictures, with other libraries? Um, well, that would be Pinterest mm -hmm. or Facebook or... Yeah, if you post yeah. them. Oh, and I, a lot of times I feature book displays that have come to me in picture form. Mm -hmm. Like I had a library do, they had a, oh, a mannequin. The, the top half of a mannequin and they made the skirt out of um, fancy book covers that had fancy dresses on them huh. mm -hmm. and it was near prom time mm -hmm. or you could do it with wedding dresses with white things on the cover mm -hmm. and say yes to the dress okay. or the you know so I got one of my libraries in my system had done that and then it was in the middle of a round display and then the books were displayed all the way around it and the, the covers were photocopied and just cut off and made into the skirt of this dress. It was a really Very clever great. display. So I put that in my um, newsletter because mm -hmm. we, and all the systems have newsletters that go out at least right. once a month and, and mine's every other month, but yeah, that's the thing. And we're yeah. glad to share yeah. those. Yeah, um, there's lots of, you could create a Pinterest board like it, like Denise did. And then that's yours. That is, and make make a you know create a Pinterest account for the library, and you know have different right. things. These are library displays, um, and then I would follow album. you so right. that that would come into mine. And then, or in Facebook, you can create an albums on different topics. When mm -hmm. your albums can be all of our library displays. Um, so there's also ways of sharing them. Also, if you are in one of our systems, yeah, our system is always looking for content for their newsletters, right? Or to post on our web page. Yeah, so send them any ideas. Um, someone did just post. There's a. Um, Ah, there is a website. Thank you, Diane. Uh, Librarian Design Share is a great place to share ideas. And it looks like the URL is librariandesignshare.org. Um, okay. Just all those three words smooshed together. Shoot. Make sure that comes up. Inspiration for library. Share. Yeah. Um, let's go over here. Just keep out of this. Get to here. And so, Sorry. yeah, that was fine. Um, I'll take it right. Oh, no. Oh, well, you gotta spell it right first. Don't type too fast. Live, library. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's hard. My fingers are faster than my brain. One of my keyboards off kilter. Yeah. There we go. Inspiration for library creatives. Science by type. So it's still loading some things here. So, yeah, different ideas here for um, doing design in your libraries. So you can put, you can submit and you can to share them there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. Is that, and then there is, you were talking about your Pinterest board, which I'm going here. This is where our regional library systems have their websites, Central Plains. As you said over here on the right, we scroll down just a bit. Yeah, I put me. one up for Martin Luther King Jr. Yep. Day. I put that up ahead of time. Oh, there's a display for that, yep. And then here's her, the Pinterest board for Central Plains. Best book lists, book club recommendations, book folding, trailers, displays for libraries. Does that say 600 and something now? Or 804? 
800, yeah. I'm looking all the time. I want to make sure that there's something that people could. I guess I can't see it all until I sign up. That's fine. But if you have but, a, a to create your own board, yeah. create your own Pinterest mm -hmm. account. Yeah. There we go. There's a different thing. I think so. Logos, bookmark your library, all sorts of ideas here on this website too. So there's lots of places you can share or where you can get ideas from out there. Mm -hmm. All right, any other ideas or comments or thoughts for today's topic? All right, um, nobody's typing anything in desperately right now. I think we'll officially wrap it up for today. Um, uh, thank you very much, Denise. This is, like I said, lots of really cool ideas. And I even get ideas for books that I might want to look up reading from some of the other topics. <laughs> <laughs> um, the show has been recorded and we put on our Encompass Live website. Um, you can find it off of um, our Library Commission site under Education and Training, our Encompass Live webcasts. But also, if you're just out there on the internet, conveniently enough, so far in the world, Encompass Live is the only thing, our show is the only thing called this. Oh, nice. <laughs> so you can Google it and you'll find our Encompass Live website right there. Um, these are upcoming shows. Um, today's archive will be posted right underneath our upcoming shows is our archive sessions. And they are the most recent ones at the top of the list. Um, so this was last week's show about um, Friday Reads. Um, so here, just like last week, the recording and the presentation will be posted here for everyone. So you have access to that. Um, everyone who attended today and who registered for today's show will get an email from me and when it is also announced um, publicly that it's ready and up on the website. Should be done this afternoon sometime after lunch. Um, so you'll be notified of that. So you can take a look at that there. Um, so that will be for today's show. We we'll hope you join us next week when our topic is Nebraska Schools and Libraries Breaking the Ice and Igniting Internet Relationships. Um, that title is actually the title of a grant <laughs> that the Library Commission has, as of actually yesterday, just applied for. Um, we had applied for it's an, an IMLS Spark Leadership Grant, um, Institute of Museum and Library Services. We did a short application last year, and we got invited to do a full application for this yes. project. Um, it's linking public schools and public libraries together um, to provide faster internet speeds to the students when they're in the public libraries, when they're no, when, they're, when the, the school's not available. Um, so we have applied for that, and I believe yesterday was the deadline, and we got it submitted. So um, we will be, um, if this does get um, accepted, we'll be looking for some pilot libraries and schools to participate in this project. So um, next week's Encompass Live will be about the project, so you can hear about it, what will be um, required from you as a library or a school participating in it, um, and you can find out all about that. Um, Holly Wolt from here at the Library Commission, and we're doing it in conjunction with the um, Nebraska's Information Technology Commission. Tom Rolfes from there will be here next week to tell you all about that. So if you're interested in upping your speed at your library or, or partnering with a school in your area to do that, check out next week's show, and we can tell you all about how that would work. So you can sign up for that. Any of our other upcoming shows here on the calendar, I'm working for more on topics for the um, dates in the early February. So keep an eye on that for new dates being added. Um, also, Encompass Live is on Facebook. So if you're a big Facebook user, pop over there, give us a like. You get notified of when things are coming up. Here's a notification to log in for today's show. When our recordings are available, I posted on here. I'm not logged in right now. Um, this is. Uh, uh, reminders of the upcoming show, the recording of last week's show. So if you are big on Facebook, like us over there and you'll see notices about what we're doing there. Other than that, that wraps it up for today's show. No more other comments came in while, we, while I was babbling there. Okay. <laughs> so thank you very much. Well, thanks, thanks for, for joining us this morning. And thank you everyone for attending. And we will see you next week on Encompass Live. Bye-bye.